Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. I'll give people just a couple minutes here to log on, but what I'm going to be doing is talking a little bit about Lucas County's new health order regarding schools. Then we're gonna look at uh, the state's updated public health advisory map, plus some information on vaccines and a few other points of interest regarding coronavirus in Ohio and more locally. After this, as always, there will be two more Facebook Lives with all of this information translated into both Spanish and Arabic. So thank you to Roxanne Elias and Zainab Shaib for doing that for those communities communities. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them live. Um, and if not, I'll try my best to look up that information and answer you later. So it looks like people are watching now. So let's just jump into the information here. I'm going to start by talking about the new order put out by the Lucas County Regional Board of Health today. So the board has ordered that all Lucas County 7th through 12th grade students are to start virtual learning only on December 4th, while grades K through 12 may learn in person at the discretion of each school district. So the orders were issued now because of the current higher risk of exposure with the holidays coming up. The board recommends that schools shouldn't actually wait until that December 4th deadline, but should close as soon as they possibly can. But they chose that date to give schools some time to figure out a plan and prepare if they need it. So here are the nuts and bolts of that order. All school buildings are to close December 4th at 4 p.m. through January 11th at 8 a.m. So there will be no athletics or extracurriculars during that time, grades 7 through 12 need to implement virtual learning, but K through 6 can continue in person if needed. And again, that is up to the individual district to decide. All schools are involved in this, including public, charter, and parochial schools. So I see some people tuning in. I'm not seeing any questions just yet, at least that are popping up on my phone here. Okay, I'm gonna move on then. We're gonna take a look at the Wood County map. So this is actually the map of the entire state it was updated by DeWine today. Usually this is updated on Thursdays, but we get a bit of a sneak peek since the holidays tomorrow. So Wood County and 10 other counties are now in the watch list on the state's coronavirus map. So being on the watch list means that these counties have met enough indicators to be considered level four purple but the system requires them to meet that criteria for two weeks in a row to ensure that there's a consistent trend in the data before they are officially elevated on the map. So if things stay the same, these counties could be moved to purple next week, um, but right now they are just on the watch list. Um, so far, going purple hasn't triggered any additional orders, so we'll keep you updated if for some reason that were to change. There are now four counties officially at the purple level in the state, and they are Montgomery, Lake, Lorraine, and Franklin. Franklin is in the purple for the second week in a row. So let me go here, and I see some questions popping up about the schools. Curious why only 7 through 12. Um, I listened in to a good part of that press conference, and what they were saying is they know that there is a need for younger students to be in the classroom. Um, I think a big concern would be for child care for some of the younger students. Um, so I think that's why they're leaning towards allowing schools to keep K through 12 or K through six in school if they need it. Again, I think they are really hoping that schools will move them remote as well, but I think they're trying to give some leniency there, understanding that there could be issues for parents. I did see a question about tutors. Now that might be something that you go to your individual district for. I don't believe something like that was mentioned on a county level, but that might be worked into your district's plan. It would definitely be something worth bringing up to your individual district. Okay. All right, so I'm going to jump ahead and we're gonna talk a little bit about Thanksgiving because obviously that is tomorrow. So early, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Um, health officials are recommending people celebrate only with the members of their household. They're really pushing for people to just stay in their family units, but if people do choose to celebrate by bringing in people from outside of their home into their home, if you're kind of mixing households there, um, they have some suggestions. They 
obviously suggest you keep it as small as possible, staying under that 10 person limit. Um, wearing a mask and less actively eating, keeping it six feet of distance, washing your hands often. And something interesting to keep in mind is not sharing utensils. You know, if you have the big bowl of mashed potatoes sitting out, usually there's maybe just like a big spoon in there and everybody piles it on their plate themselves. Maybe someone is just piling everybody's plate for them or everybody has their own utensils. That is something, um, just a suggestion there. So something important to keep in mind, they're taking this pretty seriously because a lot of the spike that we're seeing now, uh, health leaders are thinking is a result of people gathering around Halloween. So yesterday, the Ohio Department of Health Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Bruce Vanderhoff said, and I quote, the big fear is if we don't take the message of masking, distancing, avoiding coming together in groups seriously, Thanksgiving could have a much more profound impact and could actually result in our hospitals being overwhelmed. And that's been a big concern because hospitals really are reaching a critical point right now. Um, and that's a lot of it due to staffing. They are really short on staff as hospital staff is getting sick uh, or being in quarantine, they're exposed. So over the past couple weeks, they've really been putting an emphasis on what's happening in our hospitals. Um, I'm seeing, it's Sean K through six. So I, I, I hope I didn't misspeak there. Yeah, it's K through six would be allowed at the district's discretion to stay in person. Um, and then seven through 12, they need to be remote. And that is until, I just wanna check to make sure I don't say something wrong, January 11th. And that's just to get them through the holidays um, because there is that risk of people gathering and then bringing it back to the school. And an issue there has been staffing as well um, as teachers get exposed and are sick or need to quarantine. So it, it seems like an overarching issue here has been um, staffing levels in a lot of these facilities because people are just getting sick. Okay. Let's see, I, I see something John is asking everybody that's at the hospital, there's something about the flu there. Um, so, so here's the thing about the flu. One thing I know, they, there is a flu dashboard now up on the Ohio website. So that's something that you can look at that we're keeping track of. Um, but uh, I think they said 20 to 30% of all patients in Ohio hospitals are now COVID patients. So they really are taking up a good chunk there now. So that's something to also keep in mind. Um, I actually have a number here. Let me scroll down. As of today, there are 4,541 COVID patients in Ohio hospitals with 615 on ventilators, and those are both pandemic highs. Um, but I'm going to scroll down a little bit here, um, take a pause on the hospital discussion because I do wanna remind you as today is one of the big bar nights of the year, it usually is, we in Ohio are still under a curfew. So last week, DeWine issued a curfew for Ohioans between the hours of 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. every night until December 10th. So the goal of that is to keep Ohioans home during those hours to limit contacts, um, especially unnecessary contacts. Um, although it's targeted at individuals, some businesses, some retail locations will have to close. Um, some places kind of like casinos. There are a number of exceptions though. So people going to, to or from work, anyone who has an emergency, people who need medical care or grocery shopping, uh, they're going to the pharmacy, they're picking up carryout or a drive-through meal. Um, so restaurants, just for clarification, pause from that. So restaurants must close for in-person dining at 10, but can stay open for carry out and delivery. Um, so that 10 PM curfew is just for kind of in-person gatherings at dining. Um, and then of course you can still take your dog outside or go for a walk. So that's a gist of the curfew. If you need a refresher, um, and police aren't going to be pulling anyone over. DeWine said nobody should be bothered in their car. People are going to have emergencies and they should be able to go take care of what they need to do. Um, but the, the goal of this is to cut down on unnecessary contact. So I'm going to see if there's any more questions about that before I jump ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and we're gonna look at the vaccine because DeWine said this week that Ohio is actually on track to get its first batch of the coronavirus vaccine on December 15th. So that's less than a month away, but 
Of course, first rounds will be going to healthcare providers and people most at risk for the virus. So it won't be hitting the general public for probably months after that. Um, I believe they had said sometime in the spring. So plans for dispersing the vaccine are still being worked out, um, and but they will be headed out in batches. DeWine said he'll have more information on that as we get closer to that December 15th um, date. So as a refresher as well, I think most people know by now, but both Pfizer and Moderna have reported that their individual candidates for the COVID vaccine could be as high as 95% effective in protecting someone from contracting the virus, which is way higher than what health officials were initially expecting. So that is very good news. And a vaccine is very close on the horizon. So that is something to be excited about. Um, a couple, couple quick points of note too, before I look at more questions and do a quick recap. Um, the expiration date for a lot of driver's licenses, IDs, um, vehicle registrations that have expired since March. Um, that date has been extended well into next year thanks to House Bill 404, which DeWine signed into law yesterday. So if the stated expiration date on your license, ID card, or registration falls between March 9th, 2020 and April 1st, 2021, that date has been automatically extended and those documents will remain valid until July 1st, 2021. So you have a little bit more leeway now when it comes to updating all of your licenses, IDs, and registration. So something to keep in mind, you don't need to panic about that. And for restaurants, bars and restaurants, if you are a bar restaurant owner or you know someone who is, listen up, this is important. Lieutenant Governor John Houston says that less than half of eligible permit holders have applied for the Bar and Restaurant Assistance Fund. Less than half of the people who could be getting this money have applied so far. So payments aren't competitive. So that means if you are eligible and you're approved, you get that money. It's You're not competing against other businesses. There's not a finite amount of people who can win. Um, if you have more than one business location, you can receive $2,500 per location. And information for that is on businesshelp.ohio.gov. So with all of that out there, let me take a look here. Sean, okay, um, K through eight schools. So it's actually K through six is what's impacted by the order. And this is just in Lucas County for clarification. So the, I'll jump back here to the beginning of my slides. If I didn't, yep, yeah, okay. So yeah, this is just for Lucas County schools and it goes by K through six and then seven through 12. So K through six schools may stay in person if the district decides they want to do that. Again, that is totally up to the district. Um, so basically K through six schools are I would say left out of this order for all intents and purposes because it will be up to the district what they want to decide with that group of students. However, grades 7 through 12 have to be remote, okay? So that this, that starts December 4th at 4 p.m. So 7th through 12th grades in all districts, all types of schools will need to be remote December 4th. I hope that clears things up. K through 6, whatever the district wants. 7 through 12 remote. Okay, so I hope that answers your question, Sean. Let me see. Okay, here's a question. Okay, I'm sorry. There's so many here. I just want to make sure I'm catching everything. No, okay, yeah, for clarification, yeah, 7th and 8th grade in a K-8 school, they'll still have to be remote. So, yeah, it's 7th, um, starting at 7th grade, they have to be remote. It doesn't matter if they're in through a K-8 through school. Glad I saw that question um, to clarify what you were asking. Okay. All right, so I'm going to jump back and just do a quick recap here. Um, because I'm not seeing any specific questions at least. So I just went through the Lucas County order. So again, K through six students, that's up to the district, seven through 12, uh, they have to be remote and that's starting December 4th at 4 p.m. and it lasts through January 11th at 8 a.m. During that time, there's no athletics, no extracurriculars, um, and that includes all schools, including public charter and parochial schools. So I am going to go and look at the Wood County map today. This is actually the, the state map, but it impacts Wood County. 
We got an update on the public health advisory map from the state today rather than tomorrow because of the holiday. And Wood County, along with 10 other counties, has been moved to the watch list. What does the watch list mean? Well, that means these counties have met enough indicators to be considered level four purple, the highest level on the alert map in the state. However, the way the system is designed requires that those counties stay at that same criteria for two weeks in a row to make sure that it's a consistent trend in the data. So essentially, if things stay the same, if everything continues the way it is in these counties, they will be moved to purple next week. Um, but there have been a number of counties who have been moved off the watch list, so that isn't a guarantee. There are now four counties in the state at that level, level four purple, and they are Montgomery, Lake, Lorraine, and Franklin. Franklin is going on week two of being at level four purple. So far, going to purple hasn't really meant anything in terms of any additional orders, so it's just uh, an indicator for people to be aware of what's happening in their community. If anything does change, uh, we will be sure to keep you updated. Right now, Wood is the only county in our area that is on that watch list. And with Thanksgiving tomorrow, uh, a couple points here to keep in mind. Health officials recommend really only celebrating with people who are in your household. Uh, and if you do celebrate with people from outside of your house, you should be keeping it small, you know, 10 people or less, wearing a mask unless you're actively eating, washing your hands, trying to stay six feet apart, washing your hands, not to, you know, keep it, keeping it apart and just being clean, of course, and not sharing utensils. Uh, I think if you have it like buffet style, what I think a lot of people do, they're just asking that you don't have one spoon that everybody uses, uh, maybe have one person piling food on a plate or everyone has their own utensil. Um, and one thing to make clear that I think sparked actually a lot of this hospital conversation that we're having, um, the spike that we're seeing now, health leaders believe is a result of people gathering around think, or gathering around Halloween. Um, so the concern, Dr. Bruce Vanderhoff said, the big fear is if we don't take the message of masking, distancing, avoiding coming together in groups seriously, Thanksgiving could have a much more profound impact and could actually result in our hospitals being overwhelmed. So they are concerned um, that we'll see in a couple weeks after Thanksgiving a spike and that could be detrimental to our hospitals. So um, holidays are important and they want people to just take things seriously and celebrate safely is the message that they're putting out there. And today's usually a big bar night, but Ohio is still under the curfew. So that's between 10 until 5 a.m. every night until December 10th. Um, but there's a number of basic exemptions. So if you're going to or from work, if you have an emergency, you need medical care, going to the grocery store, all of that sort of thing. You can even go through the drive-through or get a carry out after that point, um, and you're fine with that as well. The idea is basically just to cut down on unnecessary contact and um, grouping together at like indoor spots. So they're not gonna pull you over, you're not gonna be bothered in your car. Um, people are gonna have emergencies and people should be able to do what they need to do. I do see a question, Tony, because it's something that people have said a lot, and I'm gonna try and uh, explain what state leaders have explained in terms of this. People are saying, okay, well, does COVID only come out at night? Everyone's sleeping, what's the deal with that? I think the idea is to cut down on unnecessary contact in a way that doesn't completely harm businesses. So the 10 p.m., at that point, if you're thinking bars, that's usually the time where people start to get more inebriated. They're uh, getting closer together, talking louder, talking closer. They're doing all of these things um, where at 10 p.m. they don't really need, absolutely need to be out there. So that's their sort of compromise to try and cut back on those types of interactions while still letting businesses stay open and make some sort of money. So that's their logic behind it. I hope that makes some sense. And I'm just gonna do, right before I sign off here, a quick reminder that licenses have been expended. The expiration date um, for licenses, ID cards, and registrations that have expired since March, that's been pushed well into next year. Um, DeWine signed that law yesterday. So if the stated expiration date on your license, ID card, or vehicle registration falls between March 9th, 2020 and April 1st, 2021, that expiration date has been automatically extended and those documents will remain valid until July 1st, 2021. So you have some wiggle room there. 
Um, and then for bars and restaurants, if you are a bar restaurant owner or you know someone who is, there is money out there to help you if you're eligible. Lieutenant Governor John Houston says that less than half of eligible bars and restaurants have applied for the Bar and Restaurant Assistance Fund. Uh, payments aren't competitive, so there's not a limited amount of people who can get it. If you're eligible, you will receive a payment. So if you have more than one business location, you can get $2,500 per location. And that information is available on businesshelp.ohio.gov. So if you own one of those businesses or know someone who does, that money is there um, don't let it pass you by. So let me see if there are any specific questions here. Let's see, I'm not seeing anything I can get to right now, but as a reminder, once I log off here, there will be two more Facebook Lives with this information translated into both Spanish and Arabic. So if you know someone who needs that information in those languages, share those streams with them. Or if you prefer to hear that information in those languages, tune into those as well. It'll be happening in just a few minutes here. Um, and if you are coming in late, you can always rewatch this as well. Or we have information on our website. We have a whole section about coronavirus and you can click through all of that. You can listen to the governor's, the governor's uh, press conferences and the conference from Lucas County today. But with all of that being said, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and have a very happy Thanksgiving.